welcome everyone, especially those that are viewing us on TV today on this Feast of the Epiphany. As we start everything of our faith, we start in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we come to this liturgy to honor Jesus, the newborn King, and is the Magi from the East. Let us also take a moment here on this day to prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus Christ, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh and the splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. On this Feast of the Epiphany, we give glory to God by saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who on this day revealed your only begotten Son to the nations by the guidance of a star, grant in your mercy that we who know you already by faith may be brought to hell the beauty of your sublime glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth and the thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you, the Lord shines and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light and kings by your sh shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you the wealth of the nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Median and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come, bearing gold and frankincense and proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for your benefit. Namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it now, has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembly, the, all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring him, bring me word, that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising pierced them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the epiphany of the Lord. An epiphany is something to rejoice over. It's almost like those aha moments that we have in our lives. But the epiphany of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ goes deeper than just a joyous moment or an aha moment. It goes into the very roots of us being Christian. If we look at the example of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, we see a deeper concern within them at the birth of their only son, Jesus. We see them being prepared for a greater future. 
We see Jesus as the king of the nations, the prince of peace, being born into our lives. But it's the example that is set before us today that takes root. We see Jesus and Mary Joseph offering true hospitality. Hospitality for three strangers that they did not know, kings from another nation, and they had nothing to offer them. They had no food, no bed, nothing in their lives except themselves. Jesus gives them the greatest gift of all of himself in this very moment. We think back a few months ago as the hurricanes Harvey and Irma struck our country. People in Florida and in Texas and in the Caribbean lost everything they had. Communities had to go back to their roots and rebuild from the very foundations of their house. Today's example of the epiphany of our Lord Jesus Christ is the hospitality that the Holy Family shows to three strangers. After the hurricanes, we saw the hospitality of our country spring forth in action of charitable giving, service opportunities, and prayer. Our example today is how are we being hospitable to those who are in need? How are we showing true hospitality to those that we don't know? Have we called someone in a time of need, in a time of distress, or have we prayed for someone? So today, let's use the example of the Holy Family, Jesus and Mary and Joseph, as offering true hospitality to strangers that are in need. My dear brothers and sisters, we now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from the Holy Spirit and, by, and was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The light of Christ continues to shine for all peoples. Let us pray for men and women of all languages, races, and cultures. For the Holy Catholic Church, that she may welcome all who seek peace and truth in faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the nations of the world in darkness, that their leaders may be drawn to the drawing brightness of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a universal charity, that all bigotry, narrowness, and racism may be driven from our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a spirit of humble worship in our own lives, that we may adore Jesus in the Eucharist, 
with the devotion of the Magi who brought their gifts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, that eternal light may shine on them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God and Father, your Son is light from light and glowing shine to all nations. As we pray for the peoples of the world, help us to strengthen the bonds of unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. Praise and glory of his name for our good in all his holy church. Look with favor, Lord, we pray, on these gifts of your church, in which now are offered not in gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrifice and receive Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts of powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirits upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, 
and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to a fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress to await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Where the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I give you my peace, I leave you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere, that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.